As a young boy, I spent most of my time sitting on the floor in my local library, a magical place that looked very much like this. But it seems children of today are growing up in a very different era. I certainly have no idea where my nearest local library is. Do you? Now the president has a plan to leave behind him a more educated population. Perhaps that's the reason why he appointed the youngest ever director of the Ghana Library Authority. This man, Hayford Siao. Now Mr. Siao has a plan. Together with his team, they have declared the year 2019 the year of reading. But will his plan work? Will he finally turn around the lack of reading culture that Ghana has developed? Or will magical repositories of knowledge like this finally close down forever? Well, uh, Mr. Sion, thank you very much for inviting us to your wonderful library. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's bringing back uh, childhood memories. <laughs> now, you've been at, op at Post for a year yes. now. Um, how's it been and uh, what exactly have you managed to achieve so far? It's been an awesome experience. Uh, Ghana Library Authority is the second oldest uh, incorporated institution in Ghana after Cocoa Board in 1950. And so to manage uh, an almost 70 year old institution is quite challenging but quite an interesting adventure. And I have, I, have, I have managed over the past year to try to address some of the systematic issues and it's been, it's been an interesting journey. Mm. Uh, you talk of systemic issues. What sort of issues did you encounter when you first uh, set foot in your office? I mean, in Ghana, everybody knows that the libraries are known for books. Mm. And, uh, you know, I came into the library and reading the annual report. As of 1980, we had one million books. And then right now you have around 500,000 books. So that's like... We lost half. Yes. So that's like, okay, what happened over the past year? So over the past uh, 30 plus years. So that has one of been one of the things that, you know, because the library, everybody knows the library for books and everybody says, oh, Ghana Library, now your books are out of, uh, out of date, you know. So those are some of the things that immediately our attention has been to, to be able to make sure that we have refreshed collections and, you know, close the gaps that currently exist because we have a new demographic, you know, uh, landscape for, for, for our citizens and we need to be able to identify the relevant materials that meet their aspirations. And so these are some of the uh, pressing issues for us to address. Uh, every public library system mm. uh, in the world knows that their, their heartbeat is what we call the cataloging or the processing unit. And then we came here and we realized that the system that was being used in 1950 is the same system that is being used mm. as of today. Uh, I mean, the furniture, you know, the outlook of everything. You know, this building, for example, has not been painted for years. And so, though people continue to patronize it, but we think that we could actually get more people utilizing the libraries if the real, you know, the conducive environment, you know, had been created. So these are some of the issues that, you know, currently uh, we've managed to. Uh, expand the processing unit to be probably the biggest uh, right now in, in West Africa. Uh, wow. We've managed to establish a new partnership with uh, Book Aid International that is sending us uh, you know, uh, books worth of 500,000 pounds. Mm. Uh, uh, the first shipment just arrived uh, today that mm. we are clearing from, from the port and these are going to be able to make sure that you know when you come to the library you can see mm. now new collections you know, uh, in our system. Uh, Generally, you know, staff morale, you know, was low. Yeah. Uh, we have staff that has been in the system for 10 years, 8 years, and they've not gotten their promotion. Within you know, a few months in office, we managed to uh, get that rectified, and, and now we can see that all the senior officers here are highly motivated to deliver on our mandate, you know, which is to establish and maintain equipment, you know, uh, manage libraries in Ghana. And so that's, that for us has been you know, the critical issues that we tried to tackle in the year 2018. Okay, now how big is the authority? How many staff and how many branches uh, and libraries yes. make up the authority? So currently in Ghana we have 61 uh, libraries. We have 
10 regional libraries. So these are mega central libraries, like the one we are in. Mm. And so they support the branches in various distributed communities under them. So in total, in addition to George Patmore, you know, library, 61 of them. Mm. Uh, we have a staff strength currently uh, around uh, over 500 uh, staff, mm. uh, both uh, professional and non-professional mm. in the classroom. That, that, that I'm working with. Mm. Now, you've described the challenges and what you've been doing to try and overcome them, but um, the president chose you for a reason. I mean, you came from a background of the, the mobile library, that was your project. Um, and the president plucked you from there and said, come and transform the library system for Ghana. I mean, how are you going to do that? <laughs> Bearing in mind, and you see, I, I don't ask this question lightly. Bearing in mind the dwindling desire of Ghanaians to read, okay, I mean 90% of basic school pupils can either not read at all or can't understand what they read. That's a shocking statistic, that's a 2014, whether it's now better or worse, I don't even know. How do you intend to, first of all, turn this around? and then start filling places like this once again. Okay, so what it is that there is a historical background. In the 1960s, Ghana Library Authority, with the Ministry of Education and British Council, did a research. And the concept of Ghanaians not reading has been with us for many years. And in 1960, they did a the research to find out why Ghanaians are not reading. And they came out to the fact that we don't have a proper school library system, because globally, what happens is that countries have proper school library system, and that is where the, the, the lifestyle of reading is picked up. Mm. But in Ghana, you and me will agree that our school library system has collapsed. So what this government has decided to do is that we've set up a program called the School Library Transformation Program. Because in the 1960s, out of that research, a new department was set up here called the Schools and College Department. And the mandate was to provide technical assistance and set up of school libraries around the country. But it has existed in name, but not in fashion for the past 30 years. And so what we have done, and ministry have released funds, and there are innovation where it's going on, is to establish a new school library department that will be providing this technical assistance to support you know the school libraries now when the school libraries and ship these teachers then have you know the opportunity to be able to recommend books for the children and then you build that culture if we don't build that culture in our schools trust me we can continue to do everything but that culture will still continue to to to, to remain the same you know so once we're able to settle on that then, of course, parents have a role of, you know, setting up home libraries also to supplement, you know, whatever interventions that are happening in the school. And then the public library system, you know, and the, the public library, as of now, you know, if you have uh, over 30 million people and you have 61 libraries and some regions even have just one library, like Wa, for example, then you see the gap is huge. Yeah. The gap is huge. But also, the interesting and the good thing is that a lot of district assemblies have set up libraries with our consultant, the Ghana Library. NGOs have set up libraries with our consultant, the Ghana Library Authority. So they are managed by unprofessional people and volunteers. So what happens is that after one, two years, these libraries collapse. And so this year, as part of the year of reading strategies, to absorb some of these libraries. And so we've learned about 15 or so of those libraries that we want to absorb and have some of those people we've recruited and through NACO and through the National Service Scheme, deploy some of these people to manage this, pro this, this library facilities. And with the new strategy of, of having a consistent streams of books coming in, we can be able to supply you know, these communities. 100,000 books a year from one of the um, deals that you have struck uh, in the year that you've been here. But I'm thinking, uh, you know, it's, it's already a challenge to maintain the books, the libraries that you have on your books. You know, 61 of them. Yeah. It, it's it's a challenge. Now you're going to absorb more. Yeah. Uh, what's the strategy? How are you going to ensure that um, they don't all end up falling into the same pattern of not that you won't have the expertise, mm -hmm. you clearly have the expertise, but 
the financial backing to keep them alive and current. You see, the good thing about you know public library system is that they are funded by the taxpayers' money, and so we, you know, as part of government effort to strengthen, you know, especially the school library system, the public library system, you know, get fund allocation. Now we are able to get get fund allocation to support operations. Right. It has never existed. You know, in the past we just use it to build. But right now, we are getting it to be able to support operations. And for the past five years, our regions have not gotten any, any impress sent to them. But uh, 20, 20, 2008, all 10 regions had impress to be able to help them go around to do monitoring. And for the first time, all regional directors have KPIs they are reporting on. You know, everybody knows our 2019, for example, our strategy plan, our five set objectives, and everybody key results areas they've signed up to to be able to report on it. And so the person who has this year as landing but the regional board, of greater Accra has set target for, for her to achieve. And with that systematic approach, and of course, they are paid by, by government, you know. So my role is to be able to negotiate for new deals, new partnerships. We just had a deal with Newmont, for example, that mm -hmm. has adopted, because I came in and I introduced the Adopter Library project. Mm -hmm. Newmont has adopted two of our libraries, and they've also adopted a mobile library. And they are providing funding for three years to support the operations. Mm -hmm. And so these sort of corporate partnerships are all geared towards you know, supplementing whatever government is. And I operated my own private. Uh, library for some years, mm. or relying on donor funding, and I was able to sustain it. Mm. Wow, yes, no doubt about the expertise. Um, but you've managed to get impressed for every single regional division yes. for the first time in decades, yes. I'm sure. In five years. In five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you do that? Because I know there are mm -hmm. state institutions today mm -hmm. that are struggling to get even the attention of government, let alone funding. How did you pull it off? You know, we have a minister who is very committed and passionate about library. I mean, you heard from his veteran mm. that, you know, he want to help improve uh, uh, the community library system. And so I came here, I, I did a profile and I presented it to him that, oh, I, we need these interventions. And he approved for get fund money to be released so that we can use it to support us. So it's more about negotiating and also getting people to know the vision you have. And you know, trust me, uh, my minister has seen that vision and is supporting that agenda. Mm. Similarly, other corporate institutions are seeing that vision. International donors are seeing that vision. UNICEF apparently is, is discussing with us, supporting us. You know. So there are serious discussions currently that are ongoing for us to be able to get all the support to be able to strengthen you know, the public library system. Okay, let's talk about the year of reading. Yeah. Where did this idea come from and what is it exactly that you intend to do yeah. to get people reading again? Okay. So, um, Ghana Library Authority will be 70 years in 2020. Uh, and we have a very rich history. The president father was a former board chairperson. So I take this organization where I had to make a mark uh, for, for, for the country to really benefit from. And as part of the year of reading, we've set up five main objectives. One is to improve our book collection. Uh, one of them is to introduce our digital library. Uh, I told you, 70 years, no automation, no digital library. Yeah. And I have been to DC Public Library and New York Public Library to discuss with them, to learn from them, because they have deployed you know, uh, digital platforms. And our mobile app is going to help Ghanaians to register and be able to borrow books online. So there are certain books that you will not need to walk into a fiscal library, and you can borrow it online. And within 15, 14 days, 21 days, it can be returned back on the shelf. So we want to introduce that, to be able to get people who have access, because the point is access. Because you know, most people don't know their nearest library, but once they download an app, they can be able to borrow something to it. So that's one of the key strategies we want to be able to use. Improving the book collection, like the new deals we are striking, is one of them. Improving our footprint, like I told you, we are bringing 15, you know, absorbing new, com new 15 community libraries. And MPs, just as some have a building, and they want us to just absorb them. So 15 of them, we are bringing. We are bringing them on board. We are organizing a series of promotional activities. Uh, these promotional activities are geared towards helping people to know that there is a library at Latibi Okoshi, that there is a library in Techima, that there is a library in Kentapo, that there is a library in Dansuman, Dodoa, and all of that. Because they exist around us. We've just not made use of them. 
And so that awareness creation is critical for, 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 for us. And, and so that's also uh, one of the key uh, areas that we want to focus on. Wonderful. You talked about um, digitizing. Uh, and, and it's one of the things that was on my mind on my way here, uh, that we say Ghanaians don't like to read. But to be fair, they're on social media. Yes. They read mm -hmm. people's posts and respond, yes, they complain when it's a bit too late. Yes. But, but they're reading, OK? Uh, it just appears that the concept of picking up a book, reading it from cover to cover, mm -hmm. that's what we're losing. So what's the strategy of the Ghana Library Authority? I mean, you've talked about digitizing some of your books. Mm -hmm. But is there really any value in trying to get people excited about the paper? books still mm -hmm. or is the future all going to be digital no I still believe that the paperback book is, will still be relevant for God knows how, how many more years mm -hmm. and digital library uh, will also continue to play its role and uh, I mean I have two kids and they prefer to read paperback books do they have Kindles but mm -hmm. they prefer to so I believe that it will still you know be be relevant however what I have noticed is that people read on digital uh, devices based on interest. Mm. So you are a journalist and so you will want materials that concerns your profession. Mm. And so if we have tailored materials concerning your profession, you will be you know, attracted to read those resources. Mm. And we've seen that, that, you know, during your teenage years and early 20s, you know, you can be reading all these novels, mm. but once you pass in your, in your 30s, your mindset is more acquisition of knowledge mm. and not really leisure mm. reading. Mm. And so once we're able to craft content and target audience, you know, people working in the banks, they want, you know, materials concerning their profession. Mm. You know, students come to this London library and they are looking for the Acula series and those things because because that is what you know that is what is going to help them get knowledge to at least satisfy their immediate needs and so for us we will not just be dumping books because we have to make books available but actually doing targeted you know uh, programs and interventions that bring the relevant resources to the people now the library is not just a place to borrow books it's uh, especially when I was growing up it's a place to go and study yes if you're a student um, how are you planning to enhance that particular service and uh, what do you do to make this a, a more attractive location for people? Yes, and that's a good one because uh, last year, uh, 2017, we had about 428,000 people visiting our libraries across the country. But with a little campaign and here and there, publicity here and there, we did in 2000, we had a 64% increase. This means that people then go to know that, oh, there's libraries and then they have tables and chairs, I can go and sit down without paying anything. I can have fun because it's paid by the tax, uh, the, the taxpayer, and that I can get access to actually read materials and have you know a lot of people are doing distance learning program, and they don't get uh, places to learn. The libraries has been the focus for them, and so we, I mean, uh, in in in, uh, in public library spaces, are creating more reading areas where you know we are rearranging some of our shelves to create more reading areas because we have. The materials that we have, I mean, like I told you, though we've not added many collections in, in 2018, but we had a drastic increase. It's because people come here and take their own notebooks or whatever, they and they come and do self-study. And of course, that is also one of the roles that the public library. If you go to George Padman, we don't give people books to borrow away, but go, the place is full, because people are there doing their self-study, doing their own research. And for us, I mean, that is why the library will still continue to remain relevant because people want a peaceful place. How many of us have uh, private study areas in our homes? How many of us, you know, uh, have you know, peaceful places in you know, around our neighborhood that we can go and So the public libraries have become like the safe haven for them. Now, uh, of course, another. Uh thing that I used to visit the library for was for journals and um, magazines and publications that um, the library subscribed to. Does the, does the Ghana Library Authority have a budget for that? Do you, are you able to stay um, updated in terms of your um, journal subscriptions? It's a challenge. I mean, we've, I mean, for many years, you know, the subscription to law reports and various journals from the international market has not, you know, been paid. And so we don't have really uh, them coming. But that is changing. I mean, newspapers, for example, these periodical subscriptions were not coming. However, we have George Padmore 
research library and that serves as a sort of the national library and it subscribes to all of that yeah. and even there's a legal requirement for you to do some legal deposit so if anybody is doing any research and they want any material and they go to George Padmore they will be able to you know find them and that is what you know is a bit of uh, good for us but there are strategies in place like I told you we are reintroducing the book fund yeah. which is a funding that was going to help be able to make acquisitions yeah. when we came in here there was no acquisition department and for a public library system not to have an acquisition department I don't know how it informs you to be able to do your purchases you know so we have set up an acquisition department that is taking intelligence from across the country what are people's demanding for that will inform purchases and so that is going to help us to be able to meet those requirements right well it's the year of reading it's already begun we're a few yes. days into it yes. I think I'll give you the opportunity to speak to Ghanaians what is that one message you want them to take away from this conversation in order to make the year of reading successful and to rekindle the spirit of reading? Yes. You know, what it is is that um, a reading nation is a leading nation. The most countries that have advanced in this world have promoted literacy as a core requirement. And we want to make Ghana a nation of readers. We don't want the situation where they say that puts uh, put knowledge in, in books and that you will hide it from the black man. We want to change that narrative and that is why we are encouraging parents to set up home libraries, parents to take their kids to their neighborhood their neighborhood libraries and subscribe. It's as cheap as three Ghana cities, two Ghana cities to subscribe your kids to libraries for a whole year. So please, we are inviting you to make use of our resources. We are available. If you need any help, contact your local librarian and God bless you. Well, you heard him say it. That if uh, they always say if you want to keep a secret from a black man, put it in a book. Well, if that is the truth, then Hefot Siao is the custodian of all our nation's secrets. And he is inviting you to come and see all these secrets for yourself. Uh, hopefully, his campaign to turn 2019 into the year of reading will be successful. And the president's vision of a more educated population will be achieved. Until then, though, Hayford, all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for your Thank time. Thank you. Good.